Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time, Harold Peary as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, a tip for you men, folks, who love macaroni and cheese. If you hanker for light macaroni with cheese goodness all through and through, better mention Kraft Dinner to the little woman. For with Kraft Dinner, she can make swell macaroni and cheese in just seven minutes cooking time. You see, the Kraft Dinner package holds a special kind of macaroni that cooks tender in seven minutes by the clock. And then you sprinkle the cheese goodness all through it with the Kraft grated that also comes in the Kraft Dinner box. You're all set, ready to fork in. Sound swell? It is. Just say to your wife, let's have that quick-made macaroni and cheese. Kraft Dinner. Remind her to buy Kraft Dinner tomorrow. And now let's join the great Gildersleeve, who's listening in the reception room at one of the Summerfield radio stations while his friend Judge Hooker is finishing his regular daily talk on the child in the home and what to do about it. rocks the cradle, rules the world. So in conclusion, remember all you dear mothers. Oh, hurry up, you old gas bag. Re remember that as the twig is bent, the tree is inclined. Now he's branching off into forestry. <laughs> Let us not forget that point in molding the little mind. You've certainly got a moldy little mind, Judge. <laughs> and now I see that my time is up. So, until you next gather around your radio... With an axe in your hand. <laughs> this is Judge Horace Hooker inviting you to send in your child problem. And you'll get a childish answer. <laughs> until then, good evening. Yes, maybe now we can get home and have some dinner. Imagine any silly woman listening to a... Uh, uh, now you are this? going to have to excuse me, ladies. You, uh, I must dash away. <laughs> it was so sweet of you to drop in. Yes, yeah, simply peachy. Come on, Judge. All right, Gilly. Goodbye, girls. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, girls. Sometimes I don't understand women, and this is one of the times. Yes, what do you mean, Throckmorton? Well, how can they listen to advice on raising children... I'm a crabby old goat who hasn't any kids of his own. What's that got to do with it? Just because a hen lays them doesn't mean she's a judge of eggs, does it? <laughs> I don't know about that. You lay them too, and you're certainly an egg judge. <laughs> I know what's troubling you, Gildy. You're just jealous. Uh, jealous? Me? Of what? Of the popularity I've achieved on the air. Uh... Every time you hear some woman praise my program, you look as green as a pickle and twice as sour. <laughs> I do not. I wouldn't be jealous of you, even if you deserved all this silly attention you've been getting. Oh, now I don't deserve what I'm getting. No, and you're not getting what you deserve, either. <laughs> Why, I'd bet $100 you wouldn't last a month if people had any other program to tune in on instead of yours. Oh, you would, would you? Are you talking through your hat, or do you mean that, Gildersleeve? Of course I mean it. Okay, put your money where your mouth is. Yes, <laughs> What money? You just bet me a hundred bucks I won't stay on the air a month. Now, wait a minute. That isn't what I said at oh, all, Judge. Oh, crawling out of it, huh? Backwatering. Yeah, backwatering. Why, George, I'm not. I'll go through with it. It's a bet. Okay, shake. No, sir. This is going to be a grudge bet. We'll seal the deal by not shaking hands. <laughs> And the worst part about the whole bet, Leroy, is that I was so excited I forgot to ask for odds. Is that why you're writing all those letters to station WVU, telling them Judge Hooker should be playing snooker? It, but how else can I win? Why don't you get the station to put you on the air instead of the judge? Well, what could I do, my boy? Well, maybe you could tell jokes. Who? Me? Tell jokes on the radio? What do you think I am, Leroy? A comedian? <laughs> no, but gee, there must be something you could do. You used to sing, didn't you, Uncle? Yes, in college. In fact, when I was young, I had operatic aspirations. You did? Did they hurt much, Uncle Mort? <laughs> Only the neighbors, my boy. 
Although for a while I thought I was going to be another Caruso. You mean the neighbors wanted to put you on a desert island? (laughs) No, Leroy, not Robinson Crusoe, Enrico Caruso. He was a very famous tenor. Oh, what stopped you from being a famous tenor, Unc? I was a baritone. (laughs) You know, all this brings back memories of my old singing professor, Senor Tomás Bulcón. Oh, a Spaniard? No, Leroy, he was Portuguese from Brazil. I still remember how he would talk to me. Rock Morton, he would say, if only Jew had less fortissimo in the pianissimo, your merendo wouldn't have so much crescendo. What did he mean, Unc? I never found out, but I think it was a Portuguese compliment. <laughs> yeah, I'm convinced you're still a swell singer, Uncle Mort. You are? Well, when did you hear me sing? Well, every time you take a bath. Yes. Why, yesterday morning, Bertie stopped to listen to you, and she said she never heard anything like it. it... Say, why don't you sing on the air? Oh, Leroy. (laughs) Do you really think I could? Sure. Why don't you try the rival radio station to WVU? Uh, You mean KQQQ? Well, I never thought of that. What would I sing? Well, if you want the ladies to listen to you instead of Judge Hooker, you better sing mushy love songs. Well, I I have got a romantic voice. When the boo-boo of the (laughs) boo-boo... I have got a romantic voice, all right. Too bad I haven't got the figure to go with it. Say, Uncle Mort. Huh? Why don't you be a mystery man and, and, and wear a mask like the Lone Ranger? Oh, yes, a mask might help. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an evening cape somewhere around the house, too. Yeah, and you could pretend you're a Brazilian, or like your teacher, the senior. Uh, senor. <laughs> By George, this is beginning to look like a very good idea, my boy. Of course, we'll have to keep it all a secret. Uh, not very dignified of me, you know. Sure. Now, all you need is a different name. Something uh, Portugal and romantical. Uh, Portugal and romantical. Let me see. Uh, uh, how about Ricardo? Ricardo? Yeah. Not bad at all. Sounds like the name of a cigar. What do you think I'm smoking? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Does this hat look all right, Leroy? Sure, Unc. It's a super duper. Yeah. Now, now wrap the cape around you closer so you don't look so spread out. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? That's swell. Now the mask. There. It's warm under here. I hope this doesn't slip down when I hit a high note. Eh, me, 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 me. Well, I guess it's all right. Now, now, don't forget your Brazilian accent, Unc. Oh, no, my boy. Well, as they say in Portuguese, adios, rapazinho. Gee, what does that mean? That's goodbye in Brazil. Oh, well, carbolic acid, Unc. <laughs> What's that, Leroy? That's goodbye in any language. <laughs> oh, for corn's sake, Leroy. <laughs> you go back and sit in the car, young man. Hello, KQQQ, the voice of Summerfield. One moment, madam. Hello, KQQQ. Ah, good evening, senorita. Oh. I am demanding to see the manager. Oh, my, my goodness, was this a hold-up? What do you mean? Uh, oh, the mask? Uh, no, senorita. I no hold up you, and don't you hold up me. <laughs> Where is the manager of this radio station? Mr. Newt Bauer is right in there in the studio. Ah, muchas gracias, senorita. Uh, manager Newt Bowser? Yeah? Senor, the time has come. From now on, today is pink letter day for the station KQQQ. <laughs> and because it was the day Ricardo, the mysterious romantic Brazilian baritone, she's first made the show up to sing. Oh, you're a singer. Sure. I am the best baritone this side the Amazon River. And on the other side, she's no better also. <laughs> well, you'll have to give us an audition someday. Audition? Sure. No time like the president. Please do have a sit down and relax a minute, eh? I will play and sing for you like thank goodness you never heard up till lately. <laughs> Sweet girl of my dreams, hear my song, I implore you. Soul of my soul, hear my guest serenade. Deep. Oh, I can't stand it. It's too beautiful. <laughs> How you like, senor? Terrific, no? 
say, that's wonderful. Who are you, anyway? I am not anyway. I am Ricardo. <laughs> The Ed is Nelson of South America. <laughs> Say, what are you doing here in Summerfield? Well, perhaps there is in this city a senorita for whom my heart she beats but 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 but. <laughs> Who should be telling? Oh, I see. Romance. Huh? I'm not saying yes and I'm not saying uh-uh. <laughs> Do you want me on your station? Well, that depends on how much money you want. What I care for money. All I want is to sing every day from five story to six. Well, fine, but that's not such a good time. That's when Judge Hooker talks over WVU, the rival station. What I care for George Hooker. You wait and look. Once Ricardo starts singing, no one listen to George. This Hooker, she will get the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight it is KQQQ's extreme pleasure to introduce for the first time on the air that sensational Brazilian baritone, the masked mystery of Melody Ricardo. Buenas noches, señores y señoritas. Para mi primera cantiga, y voy a cantar un balado delicado, which is meaning in plain English, ladies and girls, good night. <laughs> Greetings from Ricardo, the singing loafer. For my first song, I will murder you with a lovely ballad, La Rosita. <laughs> Sweet girl of my dreams, hear my song, I implore you. Soul of my soul, hear my gay serenade. At two clubs. <laughs> oh, girls, did you hear that gorgeous you sing on KQQQ last night? Oh, you mean Ricardo. Oh, yes, he's simply divine. Everybody in town is talking about him, two spades. Oh, yes, isn't he wonderful? And he's got the most romantic accent. I like it because it's so foreign. He's from Brazil, and I'm just too no Trump. <laughs> hey, have you heard him, Margie? No, no, I was out yesterday. Say, who is this Ricardo? You know, Miss Callahan? Well, I'm one of the owners of the station, but all I can find out is that he sneaks into the studio wearing a wide-brimmed hat down over his eyes and a black cloak up to his chin and a mask across his face. Sounds like a combination of Superman, the Shadow, and Red Rider. <laughs> oh, I mean, he's just the handsomest thing with great big brown eyes and long, long lashes, three no trump. <laughs> <laughs> and a willowy figure. Oh, I heard he had blonde hair with blue eyes and the most athletic build. Well, Nancy Quinn says that he isn't really a real Brazilian. She claims he comes from someplace in South America for no trump. Well, I certainly have to listen. What time is he on? At the same time as Judge Hooker. Only from now on, I'm going to listen to Ricardo. Oh, so am I. Oh, me too. I just love to listen to his voice. It's got a quality in it that just makes my scalp tingle five no trump. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, look at these cars. How did I ever get tricked into being five no trump? Oh, oh God. God. I will always go I love the you, my Rosita, for Adios, lovely ladies. I want to thank you for the fan letters, the telephone numbers, and everything. <laughs> Tomorrow, at the same time, I'll be with you again. Oh, how I'll be with you again. A sweet dream. <laughs> and cookies and donuts. A fan mail, my boy. He's all for Ricardo. Oh, can I have some, Uncle Ricardo? Yeah, shh, Leroy, of course you can. Try that chocolate fudge cake, huh? Gee, did you see the card with us? Where? Uh, just to show you what a little oven can do little, from Miss Rosita Callahan. Little oven. Now, that old maid. <laughs> Say, she and her brother own that row of stores we've been trying to buy. Gosh, maybe now you can get it for a song, huh? No, Leroy. She wouldn't like it if she learned the truth. Oh, Mr. Gill, please, you've got visitors. Oh, uh, who is it, Bertie? There's a gentleman and also Judge Hooker. Yeah, I'll be right there. <laughs> uh, hide the pastry, my boy. Okay, I got a swell place to hide it, Unc. Here's where I collect a hundred bucks from Judge Hooker. 
Oh, hello, Judge. How's Mother's little helper these days? I understand that since KQQ has had this wonderful new singer, you're getting about as much attention as Father gets on Mother's Day. Gildy, we came to talk to you about that fella. Oh, you know Pat Callahan, don't you? Oh, yes, hello, hello. We've had an important real estate deal pending you know, for a long time, haven't we, Callahan? Well, that can wait, Gildersleeve. We represent a group of substantial citizens who are fed up with this singer, Ricardo. Yes, we dislike his effect on our women folks. All they do is listen to Ricardo and talk about Ricardo and dream about Ricardo. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Man comes home from work tired and hungry. What does he get? Ricardo. <laughs> Is that, uh, is that bad? <laughs> Terrible. Look at my sister. Just because her name's Rosita and this bum of a baritone sings a theme song called Rosita, she thinks he's warbling to her. As a result, what happens? I catch her baking cakes for this guy with sugar she got with my ration book. <laughs> But uh, why have you boys come to me? Well, you haven't any women folk who'd put you in the doghouse if they found out what you'd done. Why don't you get Judge Hooker to do something? Oh, I'm in a peculiar position. Everybody would think I was jealous. Yes, and everybody would be right. <laughs> Look, I'm through horsing around, Gildersleeve. Do you still want to buy that property at your own price? Why, of course. Then first you've got to see that this wandering minstrel starts wandering again, understand? Yes, I'm afraid so, but I really hate to do it. Why, Gildersleeve? Well, if I succeed in removing this wonderful artist with a golden voice from the radio, Good music in this country is going to be set back another ten years. The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, let's consider that chicken or roast you had left over from dinner today. Not quite enough for dinner tomorrow? Well, let me tell you how to stretch and glamorize what is left into a thrifty main dish. Cream the leftover meat and serve it in a delicious ring of macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese that you cook in just seven minutes. You do it with a product called Kraft Dinner. In every box of Kraft Dinner, there's a special quick cooking macaroni. Also, some Kraft grated that puts the cheese flavor through and through in a jiffy. Just seven minutes at the stove, and you have fluffy, tender macaroni drenched in cheese goodness. For a smart macaroni ring, press the macaroni and cheese into a ring mold. Let it stand for a few minutes, unmold on a platter, and pour your cream meat into the center. A very exciting-looking, thrifty dish. Kraft Dinner itself costs very little, so stock up tomorrow on several packages of Kraft Dinner. And now back to Uncle Mort, who by now is about half dead from leading a double life. As Ricardo, the Romeo from Rio, he's got the wives of Summerfield throwing rocks at their husbands. And as Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve... He's promised to run Ricardo out of town. But at the moment, Ricardo is still going to town. Deep in my heart, I will always adore you. I love the you, my Rosita, for And so once more, Ricardo, she's saying adios, caras lindas which means in the language of my country, bye-bye, all you sweet ladies. My art and me, we stop beating each other till we meet again. <laughs> Good night. I'm telling you, Ricardo, that program was absolutely tops. It's tops? Oh, yes. Tops is yo-yos, what has been grounded. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was wonderful. Uh, all the telephone lines are simply flooded with messages for you. Just messages? No more cookies? <laughs> oh, yes, lots of them, too. Uh, wait a minute, Ricky. Before you sneak out the back way again, I'd like to talk business with you. No, Mr. Newsbuzzer. Music and business is don't mix. So I am keeping the music and giving you the business. <laughs> no, hold on. Don't go. Huh? I'm not going to keep asking you to reveal your identity or even take off that mask. But I'm in a spot and I need your help to get off it. Sorry, but Ricardo is not spot remover. No. <laughs> well, this is serious. One of our biggest stockholders phoned up and said that if I didn't arrange a meeting between the masked baritone and her, she'd fire me. Oh, what a dory trick. Uh, she's waiting to see you, Ricky. You'll go out and meet her, won't you? To save my job. Well, okay. But only because that's an awful dory trick on you. Oh, swell. Uh, the lady's name is Rosita Callahan. Rosita Callahan? <laughs> oh, that's an awful dory trick on me. <laughs> I am 
am supposing to be having a disappointment with Senorita Rosita Callahan. <laughs> Aren't you him? Oh, yes. And Joe Ricardo, I recognize you immediately by your mask. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come in, come in. Well, what are you afraid of? We're all alone. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Well, don't just stand there. Come in. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I've got a lovely dinner just for the two of us. I prepared it all with my own little hands. I'm very sorry, but I never eat such big dinners. Oh. <laughs> no, now. Uh, won't you take off your hat and your case and your mask? Oh, no. We have such nice visitation, and I got to leave. As Shakespeare, he say, parting is such sweet sorrow. Goodbye, maybe I see you doing after tomorrow. <laughs> Please don't leave so soon. But I got to go. It's not safe in this city. All the mans are jealous. They are gunning for me with a rope. Uh, a rope? Certamente. They tell me if I'm not left Somerfield by noon tomorrow, they'll all take me out to Lynch. <laughs> Men. The men are your brother, George Hooker, and lots of jealous fellows. Well, the women of this town will have something to say about that. Yeah. Oh, Rosita, I came home early. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, that's my brother. He mustn't find you here. Lady, you are saying a houseful. Oh, quick. Now, hide someplace. Uh, get under the sofa. Sofa? Madam, I am a singer, not a midget. <laughs> Which way is the back door? Oh, through the dining room. And hurry. I'll try to divert his attention. Yeah. Uh, goodbye, Senorita. If I never see you some more, the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Da di 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 da da di di da da. Yes, yes. Bertie, must you sing that song? Well, it ain't compulsory, Mr. Gilsey, but it's mighty pretty. That's the song that Ricardo boy used to sing. Oh, yes, Ricardo boy, huh? Uh-huh. He might have been a foreigner, but he sure had a nice domesticated voice. Any news in the paper? Uh, let's see. Uh, Brazilian baritone missing. Failed to appear on schedule program last evening. Foul play feared. Women storm City Hall. Police Chief Ken Dolan orders dragnet. Well, then he sure is a goner. Any time they orders a dragnet, drug, that means the worst has already happened. Now, now, Bertie, don't let this thing upset you. After all, a man was just a gypsy who probably tired of Summerfield and merely rolled up his tent and stole away. <laughs> Well, he stole about the half away, too. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll just finish my dusting later. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Bertie, too. <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't have... Uh, do you mind seeing who that is, my boy? No, no, no. Oh, hello, Mr. Hooker. Step right in. Where's your big fat? Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Congratulations. That was a swell job you did. The job? What do you mean? Getting rid of that soft soap artist who made all of the ladies neglect my nice educational program. Uh, Say, did you hear? I'm going back on the air. Yeah, I still collect on that bet, though. Okay. Oh, I don't mind paying at all. I'll send you a check in the morning. Well, you better not forget. Or Ricardo might forget to stay away. But how did you manage it, Gildy? No, no, no. Don't don't tell me. That'd make me an accessory. Yeah. Uh, Leroy! I'm getting it. Okay. <laughs> Brock Norton P. Gildersleeve live here. Well, of course he does. If you don't use your eyes, officer, you'll see it right in there. And look who's with him, Judge Hooker. The one poor Ricardo told me had threatened him. What's that? It was Rosita Callahan. <laughs> oh, hello, Miss Callahan. Uh, to what do we owe the pleasure of this visit to art? Oh, don't you dare speak to me. I finally wormed the truth out of my brother. Oh, my goodness, you did? Yes. He told me how you threatened and intimidated my dear little Ricardo and probably did away with him, too. Officer, arrest that man for the murder of my fiancé, Ricardo. Yeah, now, just a second, Miss Callahan. We haven't any evidence. Yes, don't you go around accusing a man of being your fiancé unless you can back it up. <laughs> Quiet, you. <laughs> We're investigating the disappearance of that singer from KQQQ. Did you do it? Me? Why, I never even heard him sing over at KQQQ. Have, have I, Leroy? Oh, no, you never heard him on the radio, huh? Yeah. Well, if that's true, lady, he hasn't got no motive for bumping the guy off. Uh, I tell you, my brother confessed the whole thing. It was a plot to keep me and my darling Ricardo apart. And Judge Hooker... Excuse me, I'm busy with an important case. So am I, Judge. Come on back here. Jim, one moment. You quit giving orders to my guest, officer. I know a little bit about law myself. If you haven't any evidence that a crime was committed, you can't come in barging in here bothering us. 
Guilty or right? Yeah, now drag those big flat feet of yours out of here. <laughs> and take Rosita with you. I'm telling them, Monk. Uh, Come on, Miss Callahan, he's right. Hey, Kelly, how you doing? Oh, that's my partner. Never mind coming in, Wally. We can't pin nothing on this guy. Oh, no? Well, look what I found out in this guy's garage, in the trunk of his car. <gasps> oh, it's Ricardo's tape and mask and hat. It's what? Okay, Gildersleeve. What did you do with the body? <laughs> you won't talk, huh? Why don't you tell him, Uncle? You quiet, young man. All right. We're dragging you and the kid down to headquarters. We got why you to making you guys talk. Come on. Oh, this is going to be one of my bad days. <laughs> It's almost supper time. They'll keep us here all night if you don't tell them the truth. If I ever told the truth, young man, I'd be the laughing stock of Summerfield. Besides, I'd never collect that hundred bucks from Judge Hooker. Yeah, but if you don't confess, they're going to hang you for bumping yourself off. They can't. <laughs> they can't do that. They haven't even got a dead body. They will have after they hang you. <laughs> here, shh, shh, here, here come the police back again. I don't know what's with this guy. Let's see what we can get out of him by throwing a scare into him, huh? Yeah, sure, Teddy. Now, okay, Gildersleeve, we're going to give you a little third degree. Teddy, you got the rubber hoses? Yeah, right here, Wally. Rubber hoses? Oh, great jumping, jeeps. <laughs> All right, let's commence. Sure. Only suppose he starts yelling. Uh, we don't want any kickback. Turn on the radio real loud so nobody will hear us. Yeah, okay. You guys cut that out. Leave my uncle Mort alone. He never hurt anybody in his life. Don't you dare touch him. Oh, my in my song, I implore you. All of my soul. Hey, wait a minute. That's him. That's the guy on the radio. Turn it off. Yeah, okay. Say, what's going on around here? I'll tell you what's going on. There'll be a suit for false arrest going on here if you don't let my nephew and me out of here right now. But I don't get it. You heard that fellow Ricardo singing on the radio just now, didn't you? Oh, yeah, but... Uh, then how, you, how dare you hold me for his disappearance? i open that door. Well, well sure, sure. Uh, no hard feelings, is there, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, not at all. But never do that to me again. <laughs> Come on, Leroy. Gee, I don't get it. I don't get it either anymore. How can you be here with me and still sing from KQQQ at the same time? Uh, shh, Leroy, let's hurry out of here before these policemen find out that they were listening to an electrical transcription. <laughs> Frankly, Marjorie, uh, what did you think of this, Ricardo? Oh, Uncle Mort, I thought you were just wonderful. Uh, so you knew it was me all along? But, but how did you know? That evening cake you were wearing all around town happened to be mine. What? Uh, good night. <laughs> <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Ever wonder about how to cut down the food budget these days? Well, most homemakers do, so here's a hint. You can economize and please your family, too, by serving them parquet margarine, the delicious spread for bread made by Kraft. You'll find parquet margarine is a mighty good-tasting spread on bread or toast or rolls. Yes, and parquet is so economical, you can use all you want in cooking, too, to add that delicate extra flavor that only a delicious spread for bread can give. So get a pound or two of economical parquet margarine tomorrow. Remember, it's nourishing and wholesome, one of the best energy foods you can serve. And every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. Yes, tomorrow, sure, ask for Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, one of Kraft's fine foods. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.